President Donald Trump has touched down in Singapore for historic meetings with longtime foe Kim Jong-un. But while en route to meet an enemy, Trump's left a trail of broken friendships in his wake. Last week, he finally made a begrudging first official visit to Canada for a pit stop at the G7, standing up the hose, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, by arriving late for the family photo. And then later, waltzing into meetings with little regard for the summit's schedule, and in true Trump style, playing nice in person, only to change tack hours later. He'd warned Trudeau to not retaliate, to not match his tariffs on Canadian steel and aluminum. But Trudeau's not backing down. I have made it very clear to the president that it is not something we relish doing, but it is something that we absolutely will do because Canadians were polite, were reasonable, but we also will not be pushed around. Then, just hours after skipping out early to fly off and meet Kim Jong-un, Trump couldn't resist sending one last jab Canada's way, tweeting, Justin Trudeau acted so meek and mild during our G7 meetings only to give a news conference after I left saying that U.S. tariffs were kind of insulting and he will not be pushed around. Very dishonest and weak. If Trump's G7 visit was designed to upset the apple cart, it sure did that. NAFTA's on life support, tariffs are in full swing. And to add insult to injury, Trump's now calling on the G7 to welcome Russia back into the fold. We have a world to run. And in the G7, which used to be the G8, they threw Russia out. They should let Russia come back in because we should have Russia at the negotiating table. So Moscow, of course, was kicked out for its attack on Ukraine and its annexation of Crimea. In much of all this, Trudeau has been touted as the Trump whisperer, but that charm offensive might be running out of steam. Are Canada and the U.S. headed for a breakup? We spoke to Canada's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Christian Freeland, on Friday night. It was right after Trump and Trudeau had finished that private meeting, kind of looking like partners again. But as we've seen, Trump... With Trump, things can change in a heartbeat or maybe in a tweet. I saw you standing in the back as uh, Trudeau and Trump were giving their press conference, a brief press conference after their their one-on-one -on -one meeting, and he was saying the relationship has never been better. But it's pretty extraordinary after, you know, it's been weeks of him lobbing insults at Canada and uh, Justin Trudeau in particular. Is he just messing with people? Well, great to be with you, Wendy. Uh, I was in the bilateral meeting between the Prime Minister and the President. And look, both the President's public comments and the tone of the meeting itself um, bore out what, you know, Canadians, I think, know and what we've been telling Canadians, which is the Prime Minister and the President genuinely have a warm relationship. Uh, the President really likes the Prime Minister. I've heard that from many Cabinet secretaries in the U.S. And I could see that today when the two of them met. Now, I realize that for us as Canadians, uh, this does not really seem manifest when we have had tariffs on our steel and aluminum uh, illegally and unjustifiably imposed. But that is the reality. And I do think in our relationship with the United States for our country, the fact that our prime minister has a good personal relationship with the president, the fact that they can talk to each other uh, is clearly a good thing. Compared to the other players at the G7 table, Canada is not as big an economic power. And, and part of our influence, part of our weight at that table has been as being a bridge to the to the Americans, to the American president. And, and I, I'm, I'm just wondering now that it appears that, that, that uh, it looks so nice, their interaction today, but there's been a lot of negative actions towards Canada from this president. Is our influence weakened at that table now if we're not seen as the bridge to uh, President Trump? Well, let me start by saying, Wendy, don't understate the influence and the weight and the heft of Canada in the world. In terms of our influence at the G7 table, actually, I would say that Canada's weight uh, has is as great as it has ever been. The Prime Minister is in a very important role here, holding the G7 presidency, being the chair, at a time when you know this is an important and. Uh, in some ways difficult meeting and he is navigating through it and I see the respect of his peers and their confidence in his ability to do that. You have a long history of standing up 
to Vladimir Putin. Uh, now President Trump wants him back at the G7. Uh, there's obvious pressure on you to have a good relationship with President Trump. I'm, like, is it time to back off on some of that opposition, to make nice with Putin, to be able to make nice with President Trump? Absolutely not. Uh, and President Trump uh, did not raise the issue in the discussion in, in the bilateral with the Prime Minister. Uh, the Prime Minister has been very clear in his conversations, in his meetings with partners here at the G7, uh, that Canada absolutely does not believe that Russia should be readmitted to the G7. Uh, after all, let's remember, uh, Russia was expelled from the G7 for its actions, for its illegal invasion of Ukraine and annexation of Crimea. Uh, that is not the behavior of a democracy, a participant to and contributor to the international rules-based order, and those are the core values of the G7. So Canada is very clear about that. We have been clear with our allies about that. Minister Freeland, thank you so much for talking to me. Great to talk to you too, Wendy. So as I say, President Trump is all over the place on trade, right? Sometimes he is very pro-trade, right? Zero tariffs, zero barriers. And other times he says, tariffs are wonderful in and of themselves, right? They're all great. But none of this really would have mattered in terms of the outcome from the G7. Everybody sort of would have futzed their way through it, except that the other countries were not willing to sit by and let Trump do this routine. So, Gary, is it not, so Justin Trudeau, who's handsome Bernie Sanders, he is still more pro-free trade than President Trump. There, there was talk yesterday about his eyebrow coming down his face, that his eyebrow actually came loose. That is not true, okay? His eyebrow is not actually loose. You can, if you can see this visually, then you see that, that his, his left eyebrow appears to be sliding down his face, as though he's wearing weird fake eyebrows that are sliding down his face. That's actually his natural eyebrow, oddly enough. In any case, uh, that is beside the point. Justin Trudeau ripped into President Trump on tariffs, and he said, listen, we're not going to do this trade war thing. If he wants to do this, then I guess that we're going to have to retaliate. And, and Canada's already announced retaliatory measures on some of Trump's tariffs. It would be with regret, but it would be with absolute certainty and firmness that we move forward with retaliatory measures on July 1st, applying equivalent tariffs to the ones that the Americans have uh, unjustly applied to us. Uh, I have made it very clear to the president that it is not something we relish doing, but it is something that we absolutely will do because Canadians were polite, we're reasonable, but we also will not be pushed around. Okay, so this set Trump off, right? This set Trump off. So Trump got very angry because Justin Trudeau said that Trump had basically started this trade war, which is kind of true. I mean, we didn't have a trade war until five minutes ago, and then Trump decided that he was going to raise tariffs, supposedly because he wanted to lower tariffs in Canada, but really because he kind of likes tariffs. And, and this caused President Trump to start tweeting, right? The tweet storm began. Category five, hurricane tweet storm. He said, the United States will not allow other countries to impose massive tariffs and trade barriers on its farmers, workers, and companies while sending their product into our country tax-free. We have put up with trade abuse for many decades, and that is long enough. Okay, the truth is, trade barriers have been lowered over the course of many decades to the point where the average trade barrier Canada to the U.S., their products is like 1.6%. Okay, these are not massive trade barriers in most cases. And the ones that are there are bad. Raising our own tariffs in other areas in retaliation would be one thing, but doing it because you, you sort of like the tariffs is another. Here's President Trump continuing, and again, the conflicting message. Based on Justin's false statements at his news conference and the fact that Canada is charging massive tariffs to our U.S. farmers, workers, and companies, I have instructed our U.S. reps not to endorse the communique as we look at tariffs on automobiles flooding the U.S. markets. And now he's talking about massive tariffs on automobiles coming into American markets. Okay, how is that beneficial to the American consumer? He can't explain. It's not going to be good for the economy. The White House's own report suggests this won't be good for the economy. If you were arguing, again, that you're raising the tariffs in order to knock Canada so that they knock down their own tariffs, that's one thing, but that's not where Trump goes next. Right? Trump continues along these lines, and then he suggests, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau of Canada acted so meek and mild during our G7 conference, only to give a news conference after I left, saying U.S. tariffs were kind of insulting, and he will not be pushed around. Very dishonest and weak. Our tariffs are in response to his of 270% on dairy. Okay, so... He picks out one tariff, and then he says we're going to raise tariffs on, like, everything. And then he says it's Justin Trudeau's fault for kicking back on all this stuff. See, this is why you should have a negotiation, not a Twitter fight, or go in there with an actual agenda, which President Trump obviously did not do. And, again, like, I am not a Justin Trudeau fan. I've mocked Justin Trudeau as hard as anybody on the air. Finally, the president continues. 
Uh, again, this is a massive tweet storm. Uh, so President Trump this morning was continuing with all of this. He just he was in Singapore and he still wouldn't stop it. So he, he was continuing along these lines in Singapore this morning. And here is what he tweeted. He tweeted, fair trade is now to be called fool trade if it is not reciprocal. According to a Canada release, they make almost $100 billion in trade with the U.S. Guess they were bragging and got caught. Minimum is $17 billion. Tax dairy from us at 270%. Then Justin acts hurt when called out. They don't make $100 billion in trade with us if we have a trade deficit with Canada. He says, why should I, as president of the United States, allow countries to continue to make massive trade surpluses as they have for decades? Not fair to the people of America. Again, this is wrong. This is not wrong. And then he says the EU has a $151 billion trade surplus with the United States, and they should pay more for their military. This evidence is lack of knowledge about trade. And it once again evidences that the real reason that Trump is mad here is because people said that they didn't have great relationships, right? Now, this led to some really untoward language by members of the Trump administration. So here is Larry Kudlow saying that Justin Trudeau stabbed. Uh, we're going to war with Canada, guys. That's it. I mean, I'm excited about this. I, I want a piece of Quebec. So here, Larry Kudlow says that Justin Trudeau stabbed us in the back. Until five minutes ago, the Canadians were our friends. Now I guess we're going to have to go to war with our northern with our northern neighbors. I mean, this has now turned into an episode of South Park with President Trump shouting, "Blame Canada!" Here is Larry Kudlow saying that Justin Trudeau stabbed us in the back. Here's the thing. I mean, he really kind of stabbed us in the back. He really, actually, you know what? He did a great disservice to the whole G7. He betrayed Trudeau. Did yes, he did because they were united in the G7. They came together. Okay, so they came together, but then Trudeau ripped it all apart? Not the president? Yeah, right. Okay, so here's Peter Navarro, who, uh, who went even farther. Peter Navarro is, uh, is an idiot. I mean, I'm just going to put that out there. Peter Navarro is a dummy. And Peter Navarro is one of the president's trade advisors who believes that a giant trade war will lift the United States. He actually believes this. Uh, and then he said that there was a special place in hell for Trudeau. So I guess there's a special place in hell for women who don't defend other women, according to Madeleine Albright. There's now a special place in hell for leaders like Justin Trudeau, which is really exciting. We're running out of, like, regular hell. What happened to regular hell? I guess it's now been subdivided up into special places. There's so many special places in hell. It's like the Epcot Center in hell. There's just a bunch of weird little food stands, and they sell crappy garbage, apparently, to Justin Trudeau and women who don't offend other women. Here's Peter Navarro saying that Justin Trudeau has now a special place in hell where everyone, I guess, says, eh. I guess that's just called Canada. Here he is. Chris, there's a, a special place in hell for any foreign leader that engages in bad faith diplomacy with President Donald J. Trump and then tries to stab him in the back on the way out the door. And that's what bad faith Justin Trudeau did with that stunt press conference. That's what weak, dishonest Justin Trudeau did. Okay, so look, the reality is that a lot of the people on TV are performing for President Trump, demonstrating that they, they agree with President Trump. This is how you stay in good with President Trump. It's one of the problems I have with his style of governance, which is that the president likes to feel like a strong man. And so he likes when people around him say yes to him and say, yes, Mr. President, that what you did was so genius, Mr. President. If Larry Kudlow wants to impact free trade, he has to go on TV and pretend that Trump is actually a free trader. But if anybody believes this is going to hurt Trump, they are wrong. Okay, they're totally wrong if they believe this is going to hurt Trump in any serious way. I will explain why in just a second. So from the G7, there was this, uh, from the G7, there was a picture that came out. And here was the picture. Okay, this is passed around in, in a lot of media circles. This is taken by the German delegation. And if you can't see it, what the picture shows is Angela Merkel, who is standing over a table, right, gazing down, glaring at President Trump. And President Trump has on his F.U. smile. Right? He's got his arms crossed, and he's looking back up there like, what you going to do, lady? And they are surrounded by a bunch of other foreign leaders. You can see Shinzo Abe, who's from Japan. He's kind of apparently thinking about why Westworld sucks now. He's kind of gazing off into the distance, not understanding what's going on. John Bolton is like, uh, like what's going on? But Angela Merkel is staring down angrily at President Trump. And a lot of people on the left are like, this is what America has become. If you think that hurts President Trump domestically in any way, you out of your mind. You're crazy if you believe that hurts Trump. Trump standing up to foreign leaders is why President Trump was elected. Trump standing up to foreign leaders and not backing down is, is why people like President Trump in the first place. So is this going to hurt President Trump? No. Is any of this going to matter in the end? Only if President Trump decides to pursue these tariffs. If he decides to pursue the tariffs, he's going to put a damper on the economy that has been booming under his watch. There is no reason for him to do this. He will be blamed if the economy goes south. And if the tariffs go into place and the economy goes south, he should be blamed. I mean, that, that, he, he should gain, have a part of that blame.